I've got another 10 of my finest watches in my collection, ready for my wife to really tell me what she thinks about them. But let's do this! Yes! Welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Channel. Welcome to part two of my wife reacting to my watch collection. Now she has been an integral part of the Mad Watch Collector show over the last few months because she tells it like it is. She's not a watch enthusiast and it's always nice to have someone that gives you a bit of grounding. In part one, I showed her my favourite ten watches in my collection. And on the whole, she gave them a kick in. Today, I've got another ten watches for you. This second fleet are watches that I really do like, but don't wear as much as the last ten. There's a big range of types of watches in this ten, and I'm going to tell you why I bought them. So grab yourself a drink, sit back, and listen to my wife tear apart my watch collection for ten minutes. I'm a little bit nervous. Are you ready to be destroyed by the wife ready? Let's go! I think. Right, so first of all, here are my 10 watches. Absolute stunners. For your reference, I have a six and a half inch wrist. It doesn't stop me from wearing a big watch, but you'll get an idea of the proportions. So first up is the Seiko SKX 013. Now there is a lot of nostalgia with this watch. It's one of the first automatic watches I bought when I started buying watches properly. It was definitely a benchmark for anything I bought afterwards. And this began my love of Seiko. The 37-38mm case sure does fit my wrist better than the 009007. Very basic 7S26 movement inside with no hacking and no hand winding. But this watch is ISO certified, able to take a beating, classic Seiko design, and I still am very fond of it. Bezel action is okay. It's a spongy one G affair, isn't it? It was, back eight, nine years ago, one of the best entry level Seikos you could buy. I think I paid £120 for this. Nowadays, these are going for ridiculous money because they are of course discontinued. They're definitely not worth the price some are selling right now. Still gets decent amount of wrist time and it ain't going anywhere. Here it is, the wife's views of the SKX. <laughs> oh dear. Very basic, very meh. Hate the bracelet, built for an old man. Hmm, this is not going well already, is it? Next up is the first of two microbrand watches. This one is the Laurier Gemini. Definitely one of my favourite microbrands out there at the minute. In fact, if I had the chance to design my own watches, they'd probably turn out exactly like Laurier's. The Gemini houses an ST19 movement. That's with the column wheel chronograph that you get in the Seagull 1963. You've got the two sub dials either side of the hand stack. Just such a classic design. Obviously, there is huge inspiration there from the Rolex Daytonas of the 60s. I'm a huge fan of this flat link bracelet, how it shimmers in the light. We got a bi-directional bezel. More on Laurier on a future show coming up really soon. I just might have to buy another one. Let's hear the wife's thoughts of the Laurier. <laughs> yeah, I don't dislike it. I like the eyes. <laughs> um, the blue's very showy. I quite like the bracelet. Well, that's a pretty good review. This next watch is new to my collection and I think it will probably be the most worn watch of 2023. It is the Vertex M60 Aqua Lion. When I reviewed this at the start of 2022, I knew I had to have it. Vertex are definitely one of my favourite brands. I love their military history and I really love the fact that the great great grandson of the founder of Vertex brought this brand back to life and instead of just making a quick buck, bringing out like for like of the old watches, Don and the team have taken inspiration of the past to make true homage watches the way they should be done with added modern refinement and design. This is COSC certified, 600 meter diver, it's also ISO certified on a Vertex rubber strap. Now yes the price is a lot of money but when you realise everything that Don and the team has put into these watches you will realise it's worth every penny. Big up Vertex! And here's the review of the M60. <laughs> yeah, well, I like your other Vertex. <laughs> this one is really nice. It looks luminescent already without it being dark. Um, I do quite like it. Yeah, nice. It's a win-win for the Vertex. 
The second of my two micro brands of this collection is the Islander Rangemaster. Yes, two of my favorite guys on the watch YouTube circuit, Mark from Long Island Watch and TGV from the Urban Gentry, came together to design and manufacture a watch inspired by many of their favorite brands. In fact, for me, this is more of a love letter and a celebration to those brands, which has formed this watch that has its completely own character. There's Tudor, there's Rolex, Rolex, Breitling. The case is inspired from the Saab 033, a very popular discontinued watch. The bracelet is fantastic, one of the most comfortable watches I own, and this watch definitely goes and does things with me I wouldn't dare use my Explorer for. The Myota movement inside is a bit grindy, but for the money that I paid for it, can't really complain, it's still a high beat movement, but this limited edition watch sold out within a day, and I'm so glad I've got to own one for myself. And here's the review of the Range Master. <laughs> yeah, I've seen this before. I think the numbers are squished. <laughs> I don't like the logo and the bezel makes it look feminine. Mmm, not a fan of the Range Master. Get your watch out. The next watch is a beautifully vintage Casio I was very lucky to find at the beginning of last year. You are looking at the TRW-10. The football timer. First came out in the late 80s. This thing is now discontinued. I bought this brand new, new old stock in a little Casio shop I live quite close to. That I refuse to tell other people where it is. Because it's a treasure trove of vintage Casios waiting to be bought by me. The colours on this screen are amazing. Why is it called a football timer? Well, the first mode after the time is a 45 minute countdown timer. The length of a half of a football match. Soccer. It's also got a stopwatch and alarm. I don't wear it a lot because look at it, it looks brand new. I know what the wife is gonna say about this one, but God, I love a Casio. The football timer review. <laughs> Get it away, this is just a kid's watch. Next. <laughs> I wanna to talk to you about something I wholeheartedly recommend. You know I don't have too many sponsors. If I don't use a product or recommend it, I'm not gonna try and flog it to you. So if I do help promote something, you know I love it. And I'm extremely excited and happy to once again promote Watch Crunch. The place where no snobs are allowed, where you can talk everything watches and nobody else gets bored because everyone else is into watches. It's a great place to meet new people with the same passions and the hobbies as you. You can post photos, opinions and follow other watch enthusiasts. In fact, come and follow me. It literally takes five minutes to set up an account and as soon as you do, you can start posting away. Come on over to Watch Crunch and let's build a better and brighter watch world without the snobbery. Yeah. Next up is a watch that I have thought about selling on a number of occasions, but every time I put it on, I think to myself, find me another one. And we are talking about the Fortis Cosmonauts chronograph that came out in the 90s. It's a 38 millimeter chronograph that just looks like it's ready for action. The colors are still vivid on the dial. I do feel like I have to baby this watch as it has been around for almost 30 years. It houses the Valjoux 7750 and with the bead blasted case, this thing still looks brand new. I love the screw down pushes for the chronograph. I've got this on a supremely top quality Haverston strap. All of their straps are inspired from the military. I highly recommend them. The green goes so well with the bead blasted case. Am I gonna be able to find a watch like this again? The answer is probably no. So it's going nowhere. Okay, the Fortis review. <laughs> yes, you know I like this watch. This is busy done right. I really like it. The strap is excellent as well. Nice. Yes, she has stopped me selling this watch. I promise I'll keep it. Next on the list is my Hamilton Khaki Pilot Pioneer. This watch is absolutely beautiful. Again, it's another watch I've contemplated on selling only to put it on my wrist and realize you'd be mad to sell it. This watch first came out in the 70s and was issued to the British Royal Air Force. It's Hamilton's reinterpretation of it as we have faux patina for the indices and the handset, awesome textured sandpaper dial and was one of the reasons why I wanted to buy this watch. I do love the railroad track going along the outside of that dial as it was a trait of all British military watches back in the day. This is manual wind, it's a really thin watch. This is a 2018 edition. You got a high beat rate here in the older ones. It's a beautiful Royal Air Force stunner, isn't it? 
And now for the review. <laughs> yeah, I really like this watch. I could wear this, couldn't I? Very understated. I like the textured face. Very military looking. Nice. Very good review on the Hamilton. She's going to kill me if I sell this one. The next watch is my absolutely amazing CWC SBS Diver. Still being issued today to the Royal Navy Special Boat Service. This watch really means business, doesn't it? I love the handset. The case is awesome. The broad arrow hand on the back just gives that military sign of approval. It's got a great 120 click unidirectional bezel. I've currently got it on an awesome green CWC ribbed NATO and I flipping love it. Wife's thoughts? <laughs> I absolutely love this watch. It looks manly. Mm. I love the colour. I love the black of the case. The strap is awesome. Yeah, you've done well here. Manly, she says. <laughs> Better wear it more often then. Super. The next watch is a Casio with a bit of indulgence and ironicness. We are talking the GMW-5000. The full metal square. Yes, a celebration of the first G-Shock that came out in 1983. Now, I am a huge fan of the original square and it was the 5610 that really made me hungry for more. So if I've got the resin one and I like it, chances are I'm gonna like the stainless steel one. This has an upgraded movement, Solar powered, multi band six, five alarms, stopwatch, countdown timer. Yes, it looks slightly big on my wrist, but last year was a breakthrough year for me. The realization that most G Shocks are supposed to look big. I'm not a huge fan of the bracelet, I've got to be honest. If it was on any other watch, it wouldn't get massive ratings, but I do love its industrial look. This is an ironic G Shock in the sense that I don't really want to bang this about or give it any shocks. Because the case is too pretty, but I really appreciate the history from 1983, and I'm so glad I got another one in the collection. And now the thoughts of my wife for the Full Metal Square. <laughs> oh God, no, I do not like this at all. I can imagine the person that wears this watch would be someone that sells illegal stuff out of the boot of their car. That was painful. And finally, the 10th watch. I thought I'd go out with a bang. The Grand Seiko SBGN003 Quartz GMT. The more I researched about this watch, the more I loved it. This watch is what they call a true GMT, meaning I can move the hour hand independently from the other hands. This watch houses the F986 Quartz movement. It only loses 10 seconds a year. Grand Seiko grow and age their own quartz so they can almost guarantee and maintain the accuracy of it. The movement has a thermal compensator and checks 540 times a day if the watch is too hot or too warm. It also regulates the drift of the quartz. Honestly, the more you look up this movement, the more you'll want one. This is definitely one of the most comfortable watches I own. 100 meters of water resistance, screw down crown, beautiful piano lacquer dial. There is a little inspiration there of the Rolex Explorer 2, but look a little closer, and this has got Grand Seiko all over it. This is a beautiful watch. And finally, the Grand Seiko review. <laughs> this is weird for me. It's a very blingy watch, but I really do like it. It's simple and very shiny, really drawn to the orange hand, and I think it's a very elegant watch. All the reviews are done and I'm still alive. But you're not gonna believe what my wife thinks of my new Frogman. Oh. So there you go, what a collection I've got there. The wife definitely didn't hold back, did she? She does love military watches. She loves simple faces, which is probably why you know, she's with me. She's got three favorite watches in this collection. The CWC, the Vertex, and the Fortis. Her least favorite, 100%, is the Full Metal Square. Closely followed by the kids watch, the Football Timer. But a big thank you to the wife for once again telling it like it is. It really grounds me. <laughs> If you've watched up until now, please click the like and the subscribe button. If you want a bit more of the Mad Watch Collector Show, why don't you join and click this button there. <laughs> and if I've got you for a few more minutes, why don't you come on over and watch this show. Oh, this is magic. You know, you've been with me for about 10 minutes, so I'll, I'll let you go to the loo and you can come back, get yourself a drink, get yourself some popcorn. <laughs> 
Um, actually, I've got time. I've got to be off myself, really. So click it now. Go, just click it. Click, click it. Click it.